community. Thank you all for joining us. It's a pleasure to have you with us. I request all our speakers to turn on their, uh, uh, their cameras and I'll hand it over to Binda to take this discussion forward. Thank you. Thank you for uh, joining in today. And uh, thank you, Anisha, for the uh, introduction. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, from whichever part of the group you have joined in from. Uh, really excited to have you both uh, to discuss on this topic of um, demystifying or liberation of Africa's uh, CX transformation. Right. We just finished the session from uh, Mr. Aman on uh, AI. Uh, so to start, uh, I would probably uh, like to hear from both our panelists uh, in terms of as a business or a functional leader, you know, what's your opinion on the new age engagement communication stack, right? Uh, we have the traditional channels like voice and email, but the new age ones like conversational AI, chatbot, voice bot, do you think the business here in uh, businesses in Africa, is it ready or what is the urgency in your opinion? Uh, Maybe uh, we'll go with uh, Vivian and, you know, probably Rebecca next. Yeah. Okay. Uh, good morning, Reza. Uh, and good morning, everyone. And thank you for inviting me to this uh, program. Uh, I'm quite privileged to be here. So uh, I would say in the new age, it's no longer a question of uh, whether Africa is ready. Okay, because uh, with the emergence of COVID-19, it created a lot of pressure all over the world. So for companies that were not ready, they were quickly knocked out because uh, there was no time for anybody to think or plan. It was just an emergency. And those that did not start early enough to make these preparations, they were affected seriously. Okay, and... Uh, I will give you an instance for CSCS. Just a few days before the lockdown, we were still discussing is Africa or is Nigeria ready for any, uh, any of uh, working from home and all of that. Uh, we're still considering that we're not yet mature. The African culture and mentality, we're not ready. But when the lockdown came, people that planned ahead it was easy for them to plug in and play. But for those that were taken, you know, by surprise, a lot of the businesses are shut down today. So coming to chatbot, coming to uh, uh, all form of artificial intelligence, the whole world is there right now. So for those that didn't plan for it, they already left out. So it's not about Africa being ready. Africa was also impacted by this whole thing. So I would say that there is a lot of opportunity for companies that want to come into Africa to have vest and make a lot more with regards to integration, to artificial intelligence, chatboards, and all the form of AI, because even individuals are now ready. In the past, nobody wants to talk to a machine, but today everybody wants answers. So if the machines are the answers you need to get results, then I think you know uh, that is the way to go. So it's not about whether we're ready, it's about do we have the resources to provide the services as required for time? Thank you. Got, got, got it, Vivian. And very interesting to hear that, you know, a particular statement. If you're not ready, you're knocked out. Yeah, we are very, really, really apt. Uh, uh, Rebecca, in your opinion, you know, what's, uh, uh, you know, what's that is uh, in business in Africa? Is it ready? What is the urgency in your opinion? Uh, and your opinion on these new age channels? Yeah, um, I think Africa is on the rise. And uh, one thing to mention is with the interpretations of the mobile uh, business getting into majority of the countries, for example, like Kenya, Ghana, Mauritius, and South Africa, we are having a majority of uh, AI capacities being something that uh, the tech uh, related business organizations looking at. And also the fact that AI is something that is rising within the economies of different countries in terms of the environments. From my point of view, I would think um, Africa has the talent. The only shortage we have is in terms of the decision making. And this is very critical, especially for the founders and business stakeholders who are really critical on what is the next revolution of 
improving some of the aspects that are touched with the are based with experience. Um, from an environment where I come from in the solar industry, majority of uh, our founders and our investors in the business, the one thing that they keep on insisting on is, are we aligned with tech service solutions? And one of the key things we look at is we benchmark the African markets. Um, I would want to refer back to Vivian. Nigeria as it is right now, they are more into the smartphone uh, category, but we also understand mobile money is a concern for them. Majority of the countries right now are looking at ways to improve the efficiency of certain processes we are doing. I'll take a country like Kenya, Ethiopia, we are going into mobile, mobile banking. We are now in a situation like m is global and some of these aspects are being handled through AI. How does a customer interact? They have to go through a setup of platforms in the apps and these solutions are easy. Um, are we ready for the next wave? Yes, I say we are. Okay. Great, you know, and very critical messaging that Africa has talent, right? It's about the decision that needs to be taken, right? Uh, uh, Vivian, uh, uh, in Africa, you are uh, a premier financial market infrastructure, right? You're pioneering in, in innovation, innovative solutions to enhance uh, efficient functioning of the market. Uh, what are the one or two things you would like to see or expect from a technology player when it comes to the customer experience solutions? Okay, um, well, uh, sorry if I'm obsessed with Ameo, uh, but it's because of my, my experience using this uh, solution and I will pitch it wherever I go, okay? So uh, when it has to do with uh, improvements, I think, all other companies that provide similar solutions, okay, should look at periodic and consistent improvement with the features, usability, the friendliness of these applications, because uh, when you are providing services, you have to make it in such a way that it will be very easy for people to participate, to join, and uh, for a lot of people to imbibe whatever you're preaching to them. So I am expecting things like new features, okay? Consistent improvements because the world has changed and it can only keep changing. We are not gonna go back to what we are used to because as of today, uh, I can communicate wherever I go. If I'm not in the office, I'm at home, I can connect to my application, connect to my customers on the go, either by the voice chat, I mean, the, the, the web chat, the inbound or outbound, wherever I am, I can connect to my customers. So all developers should look towards that direction. You know, it's not just about having uh, an on-premise solution. You know, the cloud is where we are all headed, okay? where you can have your customers engage you for time. So improvements, you know, new features, okay? And uh, also a lot system. The alerts that will not just be to your email on your mobile phone. You can get alerts that there are pending, you know, uh, either a, a chat pending for you or there's somebody that you need to reach out. So it's more like making a conversation as, uh, as seamless as possible. So periodically, I will encourage feedbacks from your users or users of other EX solutions to their providers so that the world can have a lot more experience with regards to usability, friendliness, and uh, extra features on these uh, services that you provide. Thank you. Great. Great. Some key, key points that you know I could uh, grab from uh, your message was being a remote ready because the world has changed and being cloud ready uh, and seamless, seamless conversation. Very, very, very critical um, expectation uh, in terms of uh, the CX solutions. Um, uh, moving on to Rebecca, uh, Rebecca Greenlight Planet being a global enterprise, right? You have multiple offices, about seven, 11 of them across uh, Africa, India. What are those one or two things you would like to see or expect from a technology player when it comes to a customer experience solution. Thanks. Um, 
I think from a green, Greenland standpoint is we are more of a tech savvy uh, organization. And um, I would like once again to say that Ameo has been pretty awesome in terms of adjusting to some of the requirements we have as Greenlight. Um, the experience that maybe we would like to see, especially with the markets expanding. Um, sorry, Bizad, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, I mean, one of our offices and connection is not very good. So no, I'm really okay, fine. Yeah. But just let me know in case I freeze. So sure. um, as a market, as we expand, one thing we have come to appreciate and recognize is that different markets have different um, requirements when it comes to the expansions. And these requirements means that what we need to do is stretch the capabilities of certain softwares and technicalities that we have in terms of systems. And um, the one thing that as an organization and being the world leading solar company at this point, we are setting benchmarks and we're looking at how can we operate uh, remotely in these uh, trials in these new markets and expansion. The one thing that comes up is um, setups that can be able to operate remotely at the same time, the security of our interactions in data, because we are um, bringing in a lot of customers into the off-grid sector. And we are getting a lot of information and data from these customers in some of our verification processes and onboarding. And the critical item is, is the consumer protection taken care of within the security and compliance of the systems that we have? That's one. The second thing is, is there cloud capability and how good of quality is it related to the expectations and the objectives of the business when it comes especially to customer service and the experience that we're setting up as a benchmark. I want to take a scenario where we opened a market in Mozambique mm -hmm. and we came to realize that in Mozambique, certain telcos do not operate in certain remote areas. And what this means is the way we are used to operating with our current softwares and current systems, we need to also know at what point does the system be able to partner with those particular individuals in these markets to be able to support um, the business objectives. We have scenarios like in Zambia where VoIP is uh, something that is restricted. In the event that we would like to go through the cloud option, what are the supports that we're going to get from the current setups we are on? So these are some of the challenges that we have and um, as a lead in uh, one of the critical functions in the business, which is customer service, is we need to look at the systems and the, and the vendors that we are correlating with. Will they be able to accommodate the needs of the business as we expand in these markets? Are they partners we can be able to grow with, not only with the current uh, items that are available, but what else can they bring into the business in more of changes? And being key in understanding the business objectives of Greenlight will be expanding in three, four more areas. What are the capabilities of the functions that we have and how do these markets operate? What can we add on the systems that we have? So key things to look out for, especially for the off-grid, not only related to Greenlight Planet, but to majority of um, the solar companies that are expanding out there is capabilities of the software, are they aligned with the new markets we are in? What are the telco requirements and the consumer rights there? Are they aligned with the normal operations we have within the systems? So mainly, basically, that would be what I would say. Sure. Uh, I could you know, see some of the common points which are actually coming out was one is being remote ready. Uh, second is, uh, you mentioned about security, right? Uh, specifically on data privacy or uh, consumer data protection uh, and being uh, able to expand seamlessly uh, irrespective of the geography, irrespective of the uh, telcos uh, uh, infrastructure and conditions, right? So these are some of the factors that you would be uh, looking at and that's the need of the business. Uh, very interesting uh, uh, factors. Uh, so uh, let me move into the other aspect of uh, the customer experience, right? So um, 
um, Vivian, what have uh, what are the enhancements uh, you've done to improve your <clears throat> overall experience internally, right, for your customers on the people side or the process side or on the technology side, right? Uh, overall enhancements on your business operation side to enhance the customer experience. So it will be a great insights for all our audience if you can share some of the uh, learnings that you've had. Okay. Um, well, like I said previously, the agents of course people will say it is good and bad. Bad in the sense that people died and uh, it impacted on a lot of us. But in the sense, I moved to a new age. And this new age, you know, came with a lot of speed with regards to processes, okay? So uh, within this period, we had to revamp our entire SOPs. Okay, that means that the way you're used to doing things will need to change. Okay, we have to even restructure in the sense that new joiners that are more tech savvy, we brought in to provide support to the team. Uh, technology um, was, you know, uh, improved drastically and new people were asked to come in to assist because we needed a lot of support with regards to technology or regards mm -hmm. to uh, back end, you know, uh, enhancements and all of that. And also, uh, Amir was quite handy in helping with this because all the people, you know, CSCS originally is more like an uh, on-premise type of service. We, we were kind of resistant to uh, exposing ourselves to cloud services and all of that, and uh, as well as self services. But with this and with what has happened thus far, we had to do a lot of rejigging a lot of trainings for the team members and we also added additional agents from the internal stakeholders apart from the existing agents that we have to go mm -hmm. provide the support so what we have done is to boost our uh, uh, team members with regards to service delivery and on the technology part we've moved away from the on-premise presence that we're used to to a cloud presence where everybody can be reached for time so a lot of our processes, you know, changed on the technology side, on the people side, a lot of people came in and uh, some other people moved on as well. But the most important thing is that they were, were very intentional with regards to bringing in key uh, requirements on, um, on the part of technology and on the part of the people to ensure that the required uh, support that we need to enhance our service deliveries are made available. So, and so far, even the customers that are used to the on-premise, seeing us, you know, going all digital, they are like wondering, I never used CSCS to, you know, switch so quickly. So nothing was impacted, really. Nothing was impacted. Our service rather improved. And funny enough, our engagement also improved. Because if I look at the tickets that we were managing while we were on-premise, they were roughly about 200. But right now, on a daily basis, we have close to a thousand. So it's huge, really. So I must say that the new age and where we are and what we have done, you know, has seriously put us on the spotlight with regards to the type of service that we offer, not just to the Nigerian market, to Africa and the world. Thank you. Got it, got it. So that means that quite a lot of restructuring and enhancement in terms of your resources, new agent addition, um, restructuring on the business side of it. And plus on the technology side, you moved from a premise to a cloud. So a lot of, lot of enhancement adoption based on the situation, fantastic. Um, I'd like to hear from Rebecca, what's your thoughts and you know, what enhancements have you done uh, which you can share with respect to the people, processes, and the technology. Yeah, um, I think mainly for us with uh, the pandemic, we basically did the three. There was the people, the process, and the technology. So first of all, the people. So when we went remote, we ideally, we were on-premise, but we were able to manage, comes again to the adaptability of the software you're using to be able to support you on your categories of where you can be able to work. So before uh, our setup was completely on-site, 
Mm -hmm. And our call center agents would work from the call center. So the first thing we did when we completely went 100% remote in all our markets is that we decided to start operating remotely, but with more details in terms of the security and compliance of our data interactions and the systems we are using before all that was being handled from a center on premise. So that was one of the things we did. Secondly, we realized that more customers were getting onboarded and what this needed was our attention on timely customer experience. And we ended up adding additional 300 plus people in terms of supporting our customer concerns because as we went remote, more concerns from customers came in and more product related issues were coming up. So what this means is additional resource in terms of productivity. At the same time with additional resource, what that means is there's a cost on it. Again, we had to think the technology, what else can we change? So we started to look at different ways of enhancing our customer interactions. And that's where now Greenlight became more involved in uh, AI possibilities, the chat box. Uh, things to do with USSD, what else can we improve on the system in terms of the IVR categorizations? So we had to sit down and discuss certain things with the mayor who have been very critical in improving how we interact with our customers on the systems. So one of the things was restructure the IVR. Key critical markets were Kenya, Zambia, um, Kenya, Nigeria, and Tanzania. So we restructured the IVR so when the customers call in, what what is the first thing they get? And they get the uh, options to be able to be assisted. In Nigeria, the move was growing very fast. Ways can we have interactions with our customers? We are engaging on chat box now. We are discussing how we can now start operating at zero minimum on customer interactions, but customers can get support through other possibilities of other technical efforts on chat box and something to do with on-time uh, website communications of that sort. So for us, a lot of things have changed, not only people, not only processes, but also the technical bit of it in terms of software and systems. One thing that also changed was our vision for our customer service department. And we started having more engagements with the people who are actually supporting us from the technical side and the systems and the softwares. Amir will tell you, we, only, we now have monthly and we pop up on weeklies just to know what else can we improve. So that is something that wasn't there. So our perspective in terms of the business understanding of what has the pandemic taught us and what do we currently have that we can think of apart from just changing the people, the process and the tech, what else can we be able to discuss at partners? So our engagements at partnership also grew. Okay, great. Uh, quite a quite a few changes, and one thing you mentioned was uh, three hundred plus people added. That that means that that's a good problem to have, right? That's a growth which is which is happening, right? Uh, and added resources and tried a lot of automation, right? That's that's a very interesting uh, uh, observation here. So to enhance the uh, customer experience in some of the countries that you mentioned, like Kenya, uh, Nigeria, Tanzania, uh, you've restructured the IVR because IVR is a point of contact for your customers to come in and interact with your uh, organization, right? So that's a very uh, uh, interesting move to change or restructure it so that it it actually has a better customer experience, right? And Overall, uh, the vision of the customer experience department itself has actually changed and uh, um, continuously improving, whether the monitoring may be monthly earlier, now it's become weekly, uh, fantastic. So a uh, lot of, lot of changes that probably that our audience can actually uh, take some uh, cues on. Uh, so I think we are uh, kind of running short of time, so I'll just, um, uh, close with uh, one last question to both of y'all. Um, what are your suggestions or advices, uh, if you can say, you know, kind of summarize one, two, three things that you would want to give someone who is considering or uh, still hesitating in adopting new age uh, communication stack? 
Uh, Rebecca, probably we can start with you and then I'll move to Amelia. Sorry, you'll have to repeat that for me kindly. Yeah, so what is your one, two, three piece of suggestion or advice uh, to someone who's considering or maybe even hesitating in adopting a new age communication stack? Great. Um, first of all, we have to think from a perspective of where is the world heading to now? And uh, what are the trends and what is the wave that is coming? Do we conform to the old or to the new? And um, the one thing I've had to learn, especially from where I sit in within the organization is things happen unexpectedly. How quickly are you able to adjust? Uh, again, I like using examples. For us, we were more of working within the office. Everything was on premise. We were always uh, scared of uh, the terms compliance and security on what would happen because we are in different markets and we don't know what the laws there are. So when the pandemic happened, what happened? Greenlight has to operate remotely. So quickly we started getting out of our comfort zone of the scare of the security and the compliance that comes with different markets, but be able to adjust with what we can work with and what we need to improve in terms of tightening the security measures remotely. Again, if for someone is scared in terms of moving into the communication plan of the staff, I would ideally say it improves the efficiency. It makes optimization and productivity more easier, less monitoring, and the system does it for you. A good example is for us when we now started engaging on chat box. We realized that some of our key customer concerns were being managed through other channels that were less costly. So what happened is it was a win-win. We bring in the revenue, at the end of it, the cost goes down. And how that has been able to be very beneficial for us is we think very strategically on what aspects of the communication plan we want to take that would add uh, relevance to the business decisions that you want to make. So again, don't look at it from a cost, but look at it from the efficiency, efficiency of improving the experience, what is easier and what would be timely for the customer and what would be the representation of the brand. At the same time, look at a win-win situation for you as an organization. Got it. So very key takeaway, understand the world, understand the market, right? And don't be scared of the compliance of security and get out of your comfort zone, uh, enhance and, you know, the efficiency, productivity, and not worry about the initial cost. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much for uh, uh, those comments. Uh, uh, Vivian, uh, your thoughts and suggestions for someone who is considering or still hesitating to adopt to the new age uh, communication stack. Yeah, so uh, Rebecca, I would say that we are coming from the same environment somehow, though we're in different countries, okay? So there's a lot of conservation here. We are conservatives and uh, the company where I work is very popular and known for that in the past. But as we speak, I tell you, we are, quite open, extremely open. And we have impacted the entire capital market with our new style, with our strategy to ensure there's open windows, you know, open up, you know, like frozen, we say, let it go, you know, open up the doors, open up the windows and let, you know, the air come in, let everybody come in, you know. So it's not just about trying to protect data, protect information, information is everywhere. Really. Okay, if you want to hunt for it, it's about moving with the pace of time. It's about ensuring that you expand your scope, your horizon, the, the people you're covering for time. Okay, and I must tell you, we are getting a lot of international investors, unlike before, because there's a lot of openness right now. There's a lot of easy engagement, but, and it's no longer about time. I worked, I was just telling a uh, 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 bookie that, that I've not slept. You see, you find out that you can work 24 seven, 
any time of the day, people can be rich because we have different time zones all over the world. Okay, Binzat, you're looking at me. What time did I uh, engage you this morning? You see? So that's what it is. Let everybody understand that the world has changed. The world is now a global village. Everybody is now in the same space for time. And the truth is, machines are here. You cannot run away from it. They are here to stay. So the easier and the faster people embrace these things, the better their businesses will grow. Like, okay? So I would tell anybody that is still hesitant to wake up, embrace the machines. They will help you travel faster than you planned. Because if you don't do that, definitely, like I said at the beginning, if you don't plug in, you'll be plugged out. You'll be left behind while the entire business community continue to try. Thank you. Very, very bold uh, statements of not being conservative and being open. And very, very interesting uh, point. Uh, maybe it's a takeaway for me as well. Uh, we are all in the same space of time, right? Irrespective of which part of the world we are in, uh, the time zones are, you know, irrespective of the time zone, we are in the same space of time. Uh, fantastic. Uh, uh, thanks for all your inputs, both the panelists. Uh, uh, before I close, just uh, a final comment from my side. Um, this journey, right, this is going to continue the digital transformation, the customer experience. Um, uh, we'll move from the one wave to other. Uh, it's all about how early, how fast we actually uh, onboard onto this journey uh, and how fast we adapt. Right. And um, on the customer experience space, uh, uh, the biggest challenge as of now is to understand the context and get how much uh, attention or automation is required. Right. It's all about customers either getting an attention or an automation. Uh, so the, the two things that would actually in the degree of, uh, um, uh, you know, how you want to look at it, uh, attention and anxiety will determine decide the right communication method or the channel, right? So you have various channels available, uh, the email, the board, the chat, uh, or the voice, right? Um, what we believe uh, is that if we can have, can we detect the intent, the sentiment, right? Um, or the anxiety level of the customer. Uh, if we can do it, then we can actually take the customer engagement to the next level, right? Uh, and in the order of um, uh, increasing attention, the channels, if you see on the customer engagement, uh, can be uh, email followed by bot, uh, a live chat, uh, a voice, uh, and uh, going forward voice, right? Uh, so going forward video. So your video is some, something which is we are expecting it to be the next uh, voice as well. Uh, so with this comment, um, I would like to uh, uh, close this discussion. Thank you very much, all the panel members. I think Vivian, you're on uh, mute now. Thank you very much, Vivian, uh, Rebecca, for being part of this panel discussion. And thank you very much, uh, the organizers. Uh, Anisha, over to you. Uh, you can take over. Thank you so much, uh, Vinzat, for uh, conducting uh, this chat. And a big thank you to Rebecca and Vivian for weighing in uh, with your opinions and your experiences on this important issue. Thank you all for joining us.